Good morning once again. Here we've got a little bit of history. I started perhaps collecting phones along with all the other bits and pieces I collect. Could say I'm probably a bit of a squirrel. But anyhow, what started the whole phone collection off Apart from the fact that I worked for BT or GPO as it was in those days, was finding this particular telephone. Now, okay, the place it came from, you won't go too much into. Suffice to say that it was being thrown out. At the time, I saw it as an unusual telephone, not like the type that I've seen or had seen uh, the GPO using. All right, the handset was the same shape, but the actual wall phone I didn't recognise. And it was from, as far as I know, some odd phones which had accumulated and they were being dumped. Unfortunately, I only wish now I'd perhaps picked up more. But um, now this one came up and I thought, well, it's not going to go in the skip. We didn't have skips in those days. It wasn't going to go in the bin. And I acquired it. It's a nice word to use, acquired it. And took it home, felt a wee bit guilty um thought well you know it was it had been dumped but you know there's so much so much controversy about stuff that's been dumped who actually owns it but anyhow long story short i kept this for a long while virtually out of sight and i thought today it's given me a chance to perhaps put it out and show you what I've got. Now this must have been in the 1960s I got this, late 50s, 60s. I'm not very good at dates but I know I, I was in the job then. A little bit younger than I am now. And um, this basically was the first telephone that I got in the collection. I mentioned it to my father at the time and said to him, Cool, I wonder why those candlesticks are so expensive. The candlestick is obviously a type of telephone which I've now got some of. At the time I didn't. The only place I saw one of those candlesticks was in our local butcher's, Dewhurst, and there was a candlestick there. My father said, well, it's, you know, it's the value is to do the fact that it's rare, antique, if you like. I was told stuff had to be over 100 years to become antique. But anyhow, that was the explanation was given me. And I took it all in. And I thought, well, I'm never going to get a candlestick phone. Lo and behold, yeah, I did. But that's another story. And one I've probably told before. Anyhow, you're probably wondering what the hell has he got now? It's an oldie. It is an oldie. Tell you what it is. It has never, ever been used by the GPO. These were not used by the GPO. They were used exclusively, I think exclusively more or less for, for posh hotels. They are looked upon as rather a posh telephone. Not common. They're certainly not common now. If you look at the price of some some of these, um, they give you a bit of a shock. But anyhow, what we've got is a 1930s London Black British Bakelite wall phone. That's what they were called. And they were 
made by Siemens Brothers. And Siemens Brothers were located at Woolwich. All right, they also made phones for the GPO. And I believe ATM also made a similar one to these, presumably for the private use as often very large offices and that had their own internal system and um, hotels in particular would have had these phones because it's actually a wall phone would be mounted on the wall and I believe some are still in, all, uh, still in operation there's a very good write up on Google look it up because it, there's often a lot of information out there which when I was a kid and didn't get. So, okay, a lot of this information I've got since. Now, looking closer at the actual phone, they're well made, you can see. This is the, obviously the part that holds the dial. Now, Siemens were the inventors of a type of dial called the slipping cam. Uh, when I picked this phone up from the collection upstairs, I thought, well, I'm sure I've never even opened it up. I don't think I had. Well, today I opened it up, as you can see. It's held in by two long screws. And it shows you what is inside. And obviously you've got the things you'd expect to find. The ringer or the bell. The old-fashioned paper a capacitor. Your terminals, L1 and L2, they're the two at the ends. One there, and one there. L1 and L2, they are your line connections. You've got a laced wires from the bell induction coil. which go into the another set of terminals which are for connecting up to the dial. Now, as I said, the Siemens brought out a new type of dial. Remember, this is probably going back to the 1930s. I think that's when, when this particular model was first made, early 30s. And they brought out a slipping cam dial and I looked at it and yes, here we have a typical slipping cam type dial. These dials were also found on the KTAS uh, phones of Copenhagen, obviously made by Siemens in England and they're the same dial slipping cam slightly different so it is another dial type to be encountered these i imagine are fairly rare even when i was working for bt you just didn't see them they were they were then rare well anyhow this phone being a siemens phone and probably untouched by too many nosy people it hasn't been altered and you've got a genuine Siemens slipping cam dial okay it's a bit dodgy at the moment it needs a little bit of loving care a little bit of clock oil I use clock oil I know they say clock oil is expensive but <laughs> I bought a bottle years and years ago at a clock fair I went to once it was a good fare actually. I bought a, I bought a lovely barometer there. Um, very nice barometer. So nice, I can't think of the name. It's a uh, Borden, Borden type. It's um, not the normal type of aneroid barometer, and they're quite rare. That's another story. I got myself. Let me show you what I've got, because I I swear by this stuff. 
there's all or clock oil. Okay, I know people. Someone out there says, "Oh, oh, it's I, I buy my oil at the at the pound shop." Okay, it'll work. But I've already had this. I tend to use it. So anyway, that's that's what I use. But you can probably get away with using three in one or any other oil. But I do like switch oil. I know when I worked for the post office in the exchanges, they used uh, a clock oil to lubricate their selectors. God, in those days I could have acquired some, but I didn't. I was very good, very honest. And scared to nick anything, not even the toilet roll. Anyhow, that is what we've done at the dogs. I'll have a, splink, a sprinkling of oil just to lubricate it to get it all going. The handset is a typical GPO type handset. But you've got a name in there again. This is also some numbers there. I don't know if I can make it any bigger. There are paint number 328926. And another number under there as well. Looks like no your guess is as good as mine. Obviously the name Siemens Brothers and Company London with the typical way that the name Siemens was written. So it's all genuine. A genuine nice little telephone. Um, when you take the cover at the you unhinge this make sure that you turn it that way round to release the well, we screws. Let's get back to them and see what we're doing. Also, before we go, that's what is on the case itself. Siemens Brothers and Company Limited, London, and these were made at Woolwich. The um, Fixing screws are quite long because they have to go through and engage on a threaded part. But when you undo them, you have to turn them upside down so you these completely come out of the hole so you can open it up. Mention that, but it's always um, it's always a bit of a fiddle that. Anyway, I'm going to close that part up and show you the rest of it. You see what I mean? It won't close down because the things have come out. So we have to turn it up. And it'll close. So that's a little a little catch there. There's your normal dial well say normal it's normal for a private system there's no letters there's just numbers and that's an indication that this would have been used as a private wall phone and then yeah they were in, in the, the posh hotels there's your base this has even got the wall mounting bracket which you'd undo those two screws, mount the bracket on the wall. You've got six screws, so the chances of that dropping off are pretty remote. You can either bring the line cord out through the back or through the this is side with the cover. Anyhow, that is more or less it. Um, show you the, it's all Bakelite. The receiver rest is in Bakelite. The dial, as I already said, is very, very similar 
to the post office dial, except it hasn't got your letters. And when you think this is going back to the 1930s, all GPO phones would in fact have had letters. Because I remember the exchange I was on, Liberty, L-I-B, Cherrywood, C-H-E, they used the three first digits, or the, not the digits, the letters of the name. Wimbledon, W-I-N, Lakeside. They're the exchanges I worked for, and I did work uptown as well on loan. But that is another story. I was on outside broadcast. Oh, I can tell you some stories about that, but I'm not going to. Anyhow, I'm going to stop jabbering on. There's the phone. I don't know what the number is, but it is, as I say, London Black British Bakelite War Phone of the 1930s. I can't prove the date on this, but, uh, you know, 1930s would probably cover it. And it was one I found many, many years ago and has taken pride of place in the actual collection. I believe also, at the same time of finding this, I'm pretty sure I did find another wall phone. It's funny they had me two wall phones. And the other one I'll show you as well. That is not a Siemens. It's made by Ericsson's. But anyhow, that's what we've got today. Enjoy. Any comments please make. I will get back to you on, on, my, on the questions. There's been a lot of useful information out there. There's one on the last phone I put up, that Dutch phone. And uh, an explanation of what the numbers meant, what they were. And I'll mention that because it is, it is helpful and I'm very, very grateful for people that have explained things. As I said before, I know a little bit about telephones. I certainly don't know all about them. It's always nice. And yeah, I think that's all I've got to say. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.